Hi, I'm Josh Morton. But most of y'all already know that. But what you may not know is chill. At least not how you think you do. Before I can explain chill to you, I have to make sure everyone knows what stress is. And the best way to do that is through personal experience. Can everyone here relate to stress? Are you stressed or have you ever been stressed? Yeah, me personally. AKA, have you ever had an Eggleston test? <laughs> But in case some of you are still a little unsure, do you relate to one of these symptoms? Oops. One of these symptoms of stress. Restless sleeping, being irritable or moody, forgetting things, or that classic feeling of stress. That sinking feeling in your stomach, that feeling of being isolated and overwhelmed. But what causes these symptoms? Well, they're all caused by a hormone called cortisol. Cortisol in itself isn't that bad. It's produced in stressful situations and can give you a boost of both energy and focus. But the problem comes when cortisol is overproduced by chronic stress, stress that is frequent or nonstop. One of the initial changes happens in your brain. It increases the number of neurological connections in your amygdala, which is the fear sensing part of the brain, and decreases the number of neurological connections in the rest of the hippocampus, which is generally the thinking part of the brain. This increase of fear and lack of thinking makes it even more susceptible to stress later in the future. Stress also changes you on a behavior level. There were studies done where they took two groups of people. One was overly stressed, the other was not. The overly stressed group did a lot worse in cognitive functioning games than the not stressed group. That's a big difference and a large behavioral change. But even more so, they did the study again, except this time, when people start doing well in the games, they got a uh, positive stimulus. This stimulus happened to be the aroma of chocolate. At the very end of the study, both groups rated the stimulus about the same, as in how much they liked it. But the stress group tried much harder in the games to get the stimulus. This disassociation between wanting and liking parallels the behavior of someone that's been exposed to an abusive drug. There was another study done, this time with rats. It shows that rats that were stressed had offspring that was more uh, sensitive to stress. And rats that were not stressed had offspring that were more resistant to stress. And the correlation was not genetic at all. It's uh, merely behavioral. This directly shows that stress can be spread and become infectious merely by association. OK, I hope I've sufficiently scared you all. But now we're getting to the good part of the presentation. I'm going to teach you how to manage stress and deal with it. While discussing with my mentor, Ms. Kramer, we decided the best way to deal with stress is just do something that you like. Do something that relaxes you and that you enjoy. You don't have to think about just something you like. For me personally, this is music, either playing it or listening to it. After a long, hard day when I'm all stressed out, I'll go home and I'll totally just turn on some music. But this can be any number of things. But why? Well, scientifically speaking, when you do things that you like, it makes another hormone, like cortisol, called dopamine. Dopamine is the ultimate counteractant of cortisol. It counteracts all the symptoms of cortisol. There we go. Now you're thinking, yeah, that's great. I'll try that when I go home. But that's kind of after the fact, isn't it? How do I deal with stress in the moment? Well, Charles Swindle suggests that you think like this. 10% of life is what happens to you. 90% is how you react to it. This means that something fairly small could happen to you, but depending on how you react to it, you could blow it way out of proportion. I'm going to give you a few tips on how to deal with stressful situations using the analogy of someone knocking over your water bottle in class. Okay, so you're in class, someone knocks over your water bottle, and it spills everywhere. Immediately, you're going to get mad at him and start blaming him. But what you should be doing is focusing on the problem at hand. If you need to blame him, you can blame him afterwards. But you should always focus on the problem and solving it and leave blame behind. Okay, you're focused, you're gonna clean up this mess. Oh, oh no, and it hits you. I have to clean up all this water. Well then again, you should change your paradigm. Think not, I have to clean up this water. Think, I will and I want to. I will clean up this water because I do not want a mess. Okay, you're good, you cleaned up all the water, everything's good. Back to your seat, and the guy next to you that just knocked over your water, you realize he's smiling. And you realize that he did this on purpose. Well, you can get really mad at him and be like, dude, what's wrong with you? Or you can think to yourself, dude, what's wrong with you? That's kind of a low thing for you to do. 
He must have some personal issue. Not my problem. Like, I knocked my water off. Just... Anyway, but think about problems like these can help you with problem solving. When there's stressful situations and you take things in ordered ways without blaming, it can help you be so much more efficient while problem solving. And people will notice that. People will be like, hey, he's good at problem solving, especially in stressful situations. I bet he could deal with my problems. I think I would trust this person as a leader. So ultimately, being chill and level-headed can help you get to leadership positions. Whoops. Oh, well, you see the slide. <laughs> at the end of the day, chill is a choice. I could have got really mad that I accidentally skipped over the thing. Oh, it's back. But I chose not to. I've given you all the facts. Now all I can do is implore you to make the choice and move to chill. Thank you so much.